first time the Democrat had 40. But that's, you know, he doesn't know. You'll tell us when you're ready. Well, thank you very much for being in the great state of Nevada and Las Vegas. We had an amazing rally last night with, I mean, tens of thousands of people inside and out. It was uh, really quite something. I think the media was very surprised at the extent of it. It was as big as uh, anything that there's been for a long time. And uh, we're just starting that up now again. We didn't do it because of COVID, but we are rounding the corner on COVID. We're rounding it and rounding it rapidly. Plus, we have vaccines coming very soon, and we have therapeutics, which have already made a big dent, a tremendous dent. But I'm truly honored to be here today with Latinos for Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And as you probably saw in some of the shows this morning, uh, they're very disturbed by the poll numbers because we're very high and leading with Latinos. And that's a really tremendous thing. I'm very honored by it. We're here to discuss my administration's unwavering devotion to our nation's incredible Latino and Hispanic American communities. And as you know, uh, a little while ago, I received the Bay of Pigs Award from the Cuban Americans in Miami. And that's a big honor, and they don't give it out easily. And uh, we're having tremendous support from the Venezuelans and it's just been, it's just a great community. It's just a great people, great community. The Hispanic Americans enrich our nation beyond measure. They proudly serve our nation in the military as members of law enforcement, and they also start small business. I can tell you from personal experience, you're very good businessmen and women. Very, very good. Extraordinary, actually. They promote the shared values of faith and family, hard work and patriotism. Hispanic Americans embody the American dream very much as much as anybody I can even think about. They embody the American dream. Uh, and I have to say, they know more about, you know, we've had uh, tremendous support from the Hispanic Americans on the uh, southern border because they understand the southern border better than anybody. Nobody knows it better than anybody. Oftentimes, I'd go to people that really understood it. They ended up always being Hispanic Americans because they understand it. And they want law and order, and they want, they want people to come in, so do I, but they want them to come in through a process and legally. Joe Biden has spent 47 years betraying the Hispanic American community totally, sending their jobs to China, raising taxes on their family and small businesses, making their communities less safe attacking their values and trapping their children in failing government schools. He's totally opposed to school choice. He's totally opposed to charter schools, everything that you stand for. He's uh, going to shred the Second Amendment, something very important to Hispanic Americans also, Second Amendment. Life, very important. He's opposed to so many things. And now, all of a sudden, he's saying, uh, gee, uh, no, I can live with this. I can live like fracking. He's totally reversed himself on fracking, uh, which you can't — you just — I don't think you can do that. I mean, maybe a politician can do that, but I can't imagine. You go through a whole primary system, and you're against fracking, then all of a sudden he comes out in favor of fracking. But he's not in favor of it. He's sort of wavering, because now the left hit him very hard. And so now he sort of doesn't know what he's doing. He's in his — he's in his basement right now, and he's saying, what do I do? He calls his handlers. What do I do about this? He hasn't left in two and a half days. In the meantime, I'm all over the place. I'm going to California from here, going over to see some of our great people that are doing such a great job with those monster fires that they have. And uh, again, forest management. I keep telling them forest management. You've got to manage your forests. Well, Joe Biden failed Hispanic Americans. I've delivered for Hispanic Americans more than any other president. I'm fighting for you every single day, and you understand that better than anybody. We implemented massive tax cuts, regulation cuts, and opportunity zones for Hispanic American families and small businesses, for African American families who have also benefited tremendously by what we've done. The opportunity zones, Tim Scott, senator from South Carolina, has been fantastic. He, uh, he had this idea, and we brought this idea to fruition. The opportunity zones have been incredible. Before the China virus hit, we achieved the lowest Hispanic American unemployment rate ever recorded in the history of our nation. And we're getting it back very quickly. You saw the numbers come in just last week. 
the numbers are fantastic. It's building very quickly. 10.4 million jobs in four months back. And uh, the number is back to 8.4 percent. Nobody thought — people thought it was going to go to 42 percent. It's back to 8.4 percent so quickly. And we're going to have a great third quarter based on everything we see. We could have a GDP going up 25, 26, 27. Some people say it could be in the 30s. We'll see. It's going to be announced, actually, interestingly, right before the election. So we'll all take our chances. I'll take my chances, because we're doing well. But before that virus hit, the numbers were the best they've ever been. We added a record 10.6. So there's never been anything like that, 10.6 million jobs. Uh, second place is our record also, but second place is way behind that number. Joe Biden would terminate this recovery with, uh, as he said, if, if somebody walked up to him, a doctor, and said, would you do a shutdown? He said, I'd do a shutdown. I'd listen to the professionals. Well, I do, too, but then you have to make your decision. If I listen to the doctors, if I listen to the professionals, or if you listen to Biden, he was totally against me shutting down our country to China. I put a ban on China where it was heavily infected, and we saved hundreds of thousands of lives. Then I put a ban on Europe. This was not easy to do, and they were against that. So you can't just listen to your professionals. You have to have some sense. You have to make a decision. But the other thing about Joe Biden, he's not a strong person, and he's not strong for law and order, and everybody knows that. And this is today about law and order. When you see a scene like happened just last night in California with the two police people, a woman, a man, shot at stone-cold, short range, right through a window, and we're looking for him. We're looking for that person, him, we think. And when we find that person, we've got to get much faster with our courts, and we've got to get much tougher with our sentencing. Uh, we have to come out very, very strongly. We have to find that person. But I'm strongly defending religious liberty, which is so important to Hispanic Americans. Joe Biden will eliminate religious liberty. He's pledged to wage attacks on Catholic organizations like the Little Sisters of the Poor. You saw that. We support them, and we support the Little Sisters of the Poor. And we're doing very well in that support. And he supports taxpayer-funded extreme late-term abortion. And he supports it very strongly late-term and even after-term, if you think. If you look at the governor of Virginia, he said the baby is born. And then, really, I guess you call that an execution, because we're not even talking about during-term. We're talking about after-term abortion. And Biden doesn't want to take a position on that. Biden opposes school choice, and he has stated that if he's elected, charter schools are gone. And charter schools have been incredible. He wants to rip away the ladder of opportunity for millions of Hispanic-American children. In a second term, I'll provide school choice, and we're already starting that process very strongly, as you know to every family in America. And for the Hispanic American, school choice and charter schools are one of the most important things we can have. And you want law and order. You want law and order. You're not going to get it with them. He never even mentioned the words law and order in his speech or at the convention. They had the Democrat National Convention. He never mentioned anything about law and order. And you see Portland, and you see some of these other places. Now, every place we've been invited to, we put it out immediately. Minneapolis, we put it out immediately. We were going to get — we were set to go into Seattle. We told them we're coming in, so they went in before us, and they put it out. So we put it out. But we've, every place we've touched has been good. And by the way, every city that's in trouble, every state, you look, Democrats, liberal Democrats, they've run them into the ground. Every city, the Republican cities are doing well. Great, actually. But every city that we've mentioned, the top ten are all Democrat-controlled cities, whether it's governors, in most cases, in all cases, mayors, and uh, the Republicans have done well. So we've achieved more for Hispanic Americans in 47 months. Think of it. It just works out that way. I, I say it. I said it last night in front of a lot of people. I didn't use the word we, but I, I'll use it either way, I or we. But I've achieved more for Hispanic Americans in 47 months than Joe Biden has achieved in 47 years. And that's a statement that's a very easy one to make. And I'll tell you, the best is yet to come. And what I thought is, uh, if you'd like, we could go around the room a little bit, tell us of uh, 
your experience, also questions. You're all such highly respected people within the community. It's an honor to be with you. And I thought in front of the media we could uh, talk a little bit, and you might tell us we'll go around this way, and we'll tell us a little bit about yourselves. It would be — I'd love that. And if you have any questions or statements, I'd love to hear them. Okay? So we'll start with you. Speak. We'll start with First you. First of all, I want to — I'm Constanza Mancia Araizaga, and I love our president. And I know for a fact that he's not racist because I'm an American Mexican Jew. My mother's from Manhattan. This is my mother. This is a little unorthodox, but this Beautiful. is for her. Great. She's 94 years old, and she signed that for you. Um, yeah. I, I'm honored. I met you at the El Sombrero Cafe in right. 2016. I don't know if you remember my husband and I. I but do. We love you. He I has like your it. ties. And this is the most <laughs> just president for Latinos, for blacks. He's done so much more than eight years of Obama. I can tell you right now, everybody, that during eight years of Obama as a business that's been in business, we've been in business for 22 years. We own everything entertainment, little, you know, let you know. Right. We do corporate events for hotels like this for major companies, pardon me. And because of Obama's administration, we suffered. We were punished. We were completely punished. He was not a friend to any of the Latinos or the blacks or any business people or women in general, okay? And during your administration, before this China pandemic, and he's right, before the China pandemic, I blame them because I feel sabotaged again, just like I did with Obama's administration. Right. I'm uh, very on fire and very passionate because I respect you as a president. I know that uh, when I read The Art of the Deal, it comes from the art of war. And I was so inspired that to be a businesswoman from that, from 1986. And I knew that you were going to be president. And I, I was on board back in 1986. This is our president. He's got to be a president. So what we've been doing as, as business owners, we've been sabotaged, especially here in Las Vegas, where our company, for example, provides major corporate events, hotels like this. Every single thing has been canceled. We've been sabotaged. We're going to lose our homes again. We're going to. I'm still fighting. For well, your governor has the state shut down. Your it, Democrat governor. He it, shut down the state, and he's playing exactly. games with the ballots. He's playing games with ballots, and I hope they're watching him. I hope law enforcement is watching this guy. He's a political hack. He's got your state totally shut down, and it's really terrible. It's re it's one of the states that's still shut down. Please. It's kill. Thank you, President. And it's killing us. And we're back to 2008 again. We're being sabotaged, and we are in big trouble here, everybody. Wake up, and, and we all need to really get out there and get the Latinos on board. We have a campaign. We've been uh, really, really pushing to wake people up because they're, they're, they have a, a sabana de, de cieguetud. Okay, that means a, a, a blind uh, blanket over their eyes. And you have done so much for Nevada, for our country. I want to see the borders protected. I have family in Mexico City, and uh, they, they, they're actually, they, they are Republicans because they're capitalists. They all own businesses, and they don't like what's happening to their borders. They've all suffered, and that's what we need to let everybody know, that our president is saving our country because of the, we have to keep this border situation under control because ISIS has come through right. from Mexico. I know that for a fact. I know what's happening right now. My own family has been victim to loose borders and, and loose uh, government and corruption. And President Trump here, I can tell you, everybody, okay, the whole press, he is the best, incredible American president that loves our country, and we need to start respecting him, okay, because the left just basically wants to knock him down, and uh, it's not right. And I will, I, I'll, I'll stand and take a bullet for you. Thank you okay? very much. No, so nice. I love you, and, and well, thank you. And thank I'm, you. And I also give you uh, my condolences on behalf of my family in Mexico also for your brother Robert. Thank you very much. That's thank you really for your nice. time, That's President so nice. Thank you very much. I love Appreciate you. It. I love you, too. <laughs> and I Thank cried you. last time, and the photo, I need a good photo with you without the crying because I oh, was a mess. <laughs> I, please. That's really nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please. Oh, Thank you. President, Thank you. Uh, my name is Sabino Gonzalez. I was born in Mexico, uh, an immigrant to here, and uh, I own a small business, uh, beauty salons. We were shut down for 
they go almost three months. And we are very... Did stupid. Nancy Pelosi go into your salon? No, <laughs> 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 one of those. <laughs> but you, don't, anyway, you don't want it. Uh, we are suffering a lot because of the restriction that the governor... I admire you, I follow you all the time. Well, my question is, uh, They all said uh, when I ran originally. And you and yes. uh, also one of my sons told me, why didn't you ask the president? That why don't he make uh, uh, the November two, the November third, the holiday, so the people can vote yeah. and they don't have to mail. <laughs> That's maybe a good idea. We'll have to think about that. <laughs> so, we'll have to think well, about thanks, that. well we have we have a lot of people going to vote. We're very concerned about the. Uh, rigged election with the ballots because uh, this governor, he made it very hard to get a site last night where we had tens of thousands of people coming and pouring. I mean, many couldn't get in, and yet he made it hard. So what kind of thing is that when he's in charge of ballots? So he's making it hard for you to speak, right? Freedom of speech. He's making it hard for you to speak. Yes. And we called it a protest because, you know, when they have a protest, they're allowed to have a protest, right? But you're not allowed to go to church. So you don't have to, you can't go to church, but you can have a protest where people burn down your stores, like in Reno and other places, where they burn down your storefronts. So that's the way it is, but uh, we will uh, handle things very well. But we are worried about the ballots because we have a number of states, four, but we have a number of states where uh, we have some very shaky Democrats, and the only way they're going to win is with uh, rigged ballots. And if you look at the history of these ballots over the last two or three years, you'll see some horrible things where there's been tremendous cheating. Yeah. And the press knows that, but they don't want to report it because they're fake news. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Please. Mr. President, uh, my name is David Mendez, and I'm a, a first generation uh, kid in America. I'm from Mexico City, too. And uh, uh, I really appreciate everything that, that you're doing. It's, it's, I think you're... you're you're a big example for everybody on how you can go and go after the American dream, how you can go fight and, and go after your dreams, right? I, everything you're doing is, is perfect. I love that there's no filters, that you say things the way they are, because that's the, that's the way I am. Uh, and here I, I tell the Latino people and everybody, I show people how money works, because we have a big financial problem. Nobody knows how to spend their money. Right. And uh, so I, I, I give seminars, free seminars for people Great. who can show them how you can get a budget, how you can go and, and make your money work for you too. And, and also one thing that I think we um, uh, we need to start thinking about it is giving all these dreamers, uh, you know, in their papers. They've been here since they were two, yeah. three years old, yeah. and I think that would be a, a, a good policy. That You're going to be very happily watch. surprised. You watch. And, watch uh, what's going to happen. Also another concern that we that The we dreamers, have. DACA. Yes. What do you see? What do you see? You're going to be very happy. Because so I happen to agree with you. So, Perfect. thank you very much. You're my president. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. President Trump, my thank name you, is Maria, Maria Camonero. Uh, I am an American born in Cuba, who left Cuba under political asylum. Uh, as someone that was born in Cuba, I value freedom right. tremendously. Right. And to me, this uh, election is the most important. Yeah. Because um, you symbolize freedom and Thank hope so for me yeah. and for so many much. people. Many Americans take freedom for granted. There are many, many Americans that are burning flags, American flags today in our streets. Terrible. There are many anarchists that do not understand how important freedom is. And a lot of people believe that it cannot be lost. And Cuba was the seventh largest economy in the world when Castro came into power. And the island has been destroyed. And when you take freedom away from people, you take the life away from people. You take dignity away from people. And 
A lot of people are like, why don't Cubans fight back? Many do not know what to fight for anymore because they don't understand. They never experienced what it was like to be free. But because we have, and we have a president like you that has put America first. And I've been here since I'm five years old. And I have seen many presidents give America away. When people say to me, oh, the world doesn't like him, I'm like, I don't care. He is the president of the United States. He is not the president of the world. Right. He's our president. That's why they don't like you. He's <laughs> our president. And I thank you. I thank am in, you I'm in the manufacturing business. I thank you for trying so hard to bring manufacturing back because when we consume what we make, it makes us stronger. And a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people just think about buying cheap and buying cheap. No, let's buy better. Yeah. Yeah. American goods are more expensive, but they're better. I started in the furniture industry when I was 21 years old. And I used to sell things that were American made, Mexican made, Canadian made, things that you could pass on. Now everything is disposable. Everything. Life is disposable. <laughs> Look at how, how they think that late-term abortion is okay. It's not yeah. okay. You know, so this election, as far as I can see it, I'm going to be 57 years old in a couple of months. It's the most important election, at least in my lifetime, because of what you symbolize. And I thank you for putting America first. Thank you, Maria. That's I really appreciate beautiful. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Maria. Please, Victoria. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity to come to this roundtable today. I, too, fled California 15 years ago. I was a small business owner of day spas. Um, because of the taxing and regulations 15 years ago, I knew it was time to move to a more business-friendly state. And so my husband retired as a federal agent, and we moved here. And I started a bath and body product line, manufacturing and distribution. Great. And we grew that for five years until the Obama-Biden administration. They won the election, and the policies were so uh, unfriendly towards small businesses. Um, the talk of you didn't build that, and we're going to build the economy from the middle class out. I knew he did not understand business, and so we listed our business uh, when he got inaugurated, sold it six months later, and me being non-political, I said I will work for every fiscal conservative business person that runs for office, and that's exactly what I did. And then um, I became recruited and ran for the State House. I actually won my election in 2014, great, great. and I was the first Republican Latina in the State House. And I realized that only 23 percent of the legislature had ever signed the front of a paycheck. Mm. So I went on. Today I'm a city councilwoman, and I went on to um, with – we now have three Republicans, I think historically, or at least for the first time three Democrats and an independent mayor, and I can tell you that we will not defund the police as long good. as I'm there. That's good. That's good. Yes. And I can tell you, Mr. President, it is a breath of fresh air to have a president that we know that we can have the opportunity to start a business, to bring our vision to fruition. You have done more for this country in my lifetime than any other president. And I will fight hard for your reelection. Very nice. thank and you. thank you very much for everything that you have done. One more thing, and when I get upset because the fake media attacks me, mm -hmm. my husband says to me, "Stop whining. Think about what President Trump goes through every day." <laughs> A lot of truth to that. Thank your husband very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you very much for having me here, President Donald thank Trump. You, and uh, my, my, my name is Jesus Marquez. I'm a uh, small business owner. I, I'm also part of the Latinos for Trump uh, advisory board. And I'm a, the, a local radio show host for the only conservative radio show host in Nevada, myself. And uh, uh, I'm also was uh, recently uh, appointed by you 
for uh, to be a commissioner for the newly created uh, Hispanic Prosperity Initiative. And it's a great honor to serve my country, especially serve my country under uh, you, Mr. President. Uh, one thing that I wanted to tell you, the first thing I wanted to tell you is that Nevada welcomes you. Uh, we, we've been waiting for you because uh, we need you. We need your policies. We need uh, everything you do. Uh, we have a governor that has been uh, very tough on us, not just businesses, but people. I hear uh, through my radio show and, and, and all the work that I do, knocking on doors and organizing pastors and, and, and people and leaders here in, in Nevada and Las Vegas, one thing I hear from everybody is that they are tired of the situation because they want to get America back. They want to get Nevada back up and right. running. And uh, I hear, even from union members, I hear them say, that they they are struggling because uh, they, they are the, the uncertainty of being locked down of not you know having their hours and and, and so they are hurting. Especially also another thing is that uh, I I am a big I'm a big advocate for uh, school choice. My two kids who are uh, school age go to a charter school. My six year old came to me the other day running because she heard in the news that uh, Biden was going to shut down charter schools. And my six-year-old told me, Daddy, Daddy, is it true that Biden's going to shut our, my school? She loves her school. We love her school. And uh, it is very important that uh, we save our schools and also our neighborhoods from the, uh, uh, the, the insecurity. The law and order that you propose is what we want in all our states. And uh, especially in our communities, Hispanic community, we are directly impacted by uh, the uncertainty of, of not having a, uh, a law and order system, and, and that's what we want. We want, we want law and order in our, in our cities, in our communities, and I think you are the president for that. I thank you very much, and I agree with mo everybody here that says that you are the best president in decades, or at least in my lifetime, you, and I love thank history. You, I, I can go back a couple of decades thank before you. I was born, and I know that you are the best president. Really nice. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank God bless you. you. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Please, Laura. Yes, Mr. President, thank you so much for just being thank here you. and making this time to, to meet with us. It's an honor and privilege to be in your presence. Now, I don't want to get too emotional, but I did bring my tissue and my notes oh, just okay. in case I lose it. <laughs> um, I am a small business owner that I am in the stamping industry. I started my business back in October of 2014, and I felt that there was just so many great programs in our city that a lot of people didn't know about them. So I went ahead and I started with two other community leaders, a nonprofit organization. We are a 501c3. Um, so I'm really sorry, I can't endorse anyone through the organization, um, but we, we basically, we started in January of 2015. Um, we represent basically bringing the Hispanic and non-Hispanic um, business community together. We're made up of a lot of volunteers, small business owners. We um, basically focus on educating our community on business. Uh, we volunteer in the schools. Uh, we actually adopted Arturo Cambero Elementary School over five years ago. And two years ago, we went ahead and um, took on Del Robinson Middle School. It's very important for us to go into our community, into our schools, and allow the children to be able to see Latina women, Latino men, you know, that are attorneys, that are business owners, so then that way we can guide them. I will tell you that this administration, you. You've been such a blessing. The SBA, absolutely wonderful. I mean, for you guys to have been able to pass the PPP, the disaster loan, me personally, there's no way that my business would still be alive if it wasn't for you. And so we do have different types of events, and one event that we have every single year, it's our fundraiser, our annual fundraiser, our signature event. It's called Exito Awards. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I would have loved to have nominated the governor. I, I would have, what an honor and privilege to have nominated the, the governor of Nevada. But unfortunately, I couldn't. Couldn't find myself to actually nominate him because he has killed our businesses. Okay? And, and so I went ahead and I nominated you, President, and I nominated also Javita Carranza. And I will tell you that on Friday, you won the nomination. No, <laughs> so we're really excited. <laughs> so now we just hope that you accept our nomination. We have to actually go through that process. And we really do hope you, you do accept I it. I will. Okay? okay, and I will accept thank it. Okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, thank you. Okay. And once again, we absolutely love you. Thank you very All much. Right, thank thank you. you. I appreciate that.
Very nice, beautiful. I didn't cry. No, you did very well. <laughs> Mr. President, it's an absolute honor to meet you and to be here today. Um, I actually didn't think I was going to be chosen to be one of the Asian ones here, um, but you're absolutely amazing. And my mama, before I get in trouble uh, with my mom, she said, when you meet President Trump, you better tell him, oh, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy that out of the way. Uh, I'm a small business owner. I own a giant, a giant general service. Um, I've been affected with COVID and um, with the, what, what the governor's doing. And it's hard, but um, Christ is with us. And he's going to continue to help us. And I believe that he puts you in your position to help this country. And you're doing a fantastic job. I didn't come here with a question. I just came here to tell you how much pride. That's really nice. And so, will you say hello to your mother? Okay. Hi, my name is Carol Dominguez. <laughs> good. And, um, say hello to her. And she's spicy. She, she did it. She did a good <laughs> job. <laughs> she did a good job with the sun. I can see that. Right? Thank yeah, you very much. Um, but um, I am really proud of you. Thank you very and much. It's a very honor. It's, I'm amazed. Appreciate Thank it. You Thank you very much. Great honor. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Thank President. You. My name is Blanca Fax. I come from Guatemala back in 1989. I moved to this great state of Nevada in uh, 1996. Uh, my husband and I, become, we own multiple businesses in uh, rapid real estate, and we've been having a little bit hard time with uh, one particular business, which is bar and restaurant, and we also have gaming, and the gaming has been shut down for us, not for the casino, not for... Uh, if you go to the Smith's markers, they they have all the machines open, so it's only like being like like selected people they can run the business. So I don't understand how the governor is choosing who who can run the it's business. Very unfair. It's I agree. very unfair. So uh, in that area, I'm very uh, very hurt. But uh, I'm here and to tell you that I'm very honored that you select me to be on this table to represent the rest of the Hispanic, like we all, as we understand everybody have a hard time. This year has been really hard for everybody. But thanks to all the assistance programs that you, uh, that you create, it helps me to maintain one of my business. We got the PPP program and the, I, the EIDL program. And we have lot. We support 20 employees, and, and we're very proud to have you as a president. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, great seeing you here again. Uh, second time I get, well, third time I get to meet you. Really excited. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our business. Um, this, we're in the business. I did not start our business. It was my parents who started the company. Uh, 57 years ago, um, and I like to say my with, I'm 12 child of 13, uh, so my older brother and sisters started work really hard along with my parents to get the company going. Uh, our name of the of our company is Roberto's Tapa Shop. We have uh, 72 stores total. We have uh, 54 stores here in Las Vegas, three up in Reno, the rest are in San Diego where we started. Um, you know. When my parents came from Mexico, you know, they, they came out here to, you know, for the American dream. My, my dad came up here, uh, he worked up in, in uh, Michigan, in the Ford Company, he worked in the railroad company before. Um, in 1957, he brought my mother and seven of my brother and sisters over. Uh, they worked hard in the fields, and in 1964, my dad started a uh, tortilla factory, uh, a factory at his own house. And from there, he grew, he grew, um, Opened up, opening up restaurants in San Diego, and then 1990 moved here to Las Vegas. Um, when he passed away in 1999, uh, he had 18 stores. Of those 18 stores, you know, uh, I still have 10 stores that are still up and running. Um, oh boy. Um, anyways, I just want to say again, thank you for having me here again, and um, you know, we we. My dad taught us to work hard. Um, he never pushed us to go to school. Out of 13 of us, uh, my brother and sisters, only two graduated. Um, but he always told us, you're not going to go to school, you go to work for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, yeah. I, was, I was one of the 11 kids who chose to go to work. I was uh, very young when I started working for him. And, and again, now I'm in charge of, of all of our stores here in Nevada. That's great. So, um, you know, it, it, it is hard work, but the payoffs is pretty great. Good. Uh, with this COVID, um, 
I cannot say we've been affected. Actually, you know, for for some reason, our restaurants are doing really, really well. Um, we've opened three stores this year, and we're going to be opening two more this year. Wow. Before the year so That's status, fantastic. You know. We're growing. We're growing. We're still looking for places in, in Las Vegas to open more stores. Um, you know, people tell me, because you have so many here in Las Vegas. Why open more? Well, there, there, there's room for more. There's room for more. So uh, that's what I've got to say. And again, you know, we, we love the work you're doing. We love what you've done for us. I think you helped us a lot, you know, with your tax programs. Um, we benefit a lot from that. Um, and that's it. That's what I've got to say. Well, your father would be very proud of you, right? Good job. That was a great job. And Thank again, you. I do want to say my condolences to you with Thank your brother. You. I just lost my mom two months ago tomorrow, so... Um, it's not easy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Great thank job. You. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody very much. This is fantastic. And again, uh, it's never been shown like this for a Republican. The Republicans are good, and Democrats are good, but there's never been anything quite like this. When we saw the uh, love last night, uh, and long before that, frankly, because I've been with the Latinos, the Hispanics. Uh, you go by many different names, all different. Some prefer one, some prefer another. You know, we discuss it. And in the end, uh, they say, do whatever you want, call us whatever you want, because you've been the best that we've ever had. And uh, that's such an honor when people say that. And uh, we love you, and we will be with you, and we're never going to let you down. And I want to thank you all for being here. It's really great. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Great job. Thank